Welcome back, everyone. In the next uh, four videos, we're going to take a look at Python classes and the object-oriented notations that Python uses. I encourage you to watch all the videos in order because it's going to uh, give clarify a lot of things about how Python works with objects. If you have no idea what objects are, what classes are, Hopefully, it's going to clarify all of that for you. I hope you really enjoy these videos. Let's go ahead and get started with uh, creating a brand new Python 3 notebook. These videos will be divided into basically four pieces, but I'm going to just continue all of it in one Python notebook. I'm going to call this, and I think I'm up to 14 at this point, yes. I'm going to make this year one for classes. Uh, so classes allow a logical grouping of functions. And data, which we call methods and attributes. It's just a quick uh, uh, history that all of this was created by Xerox in the 1970s. Uh, they had a bunch of young, bright graduate students who had the greatest job in the world, in my opinion. They were paid to innovate. And one of the things that they innovated was object-oriented programming, where they, where they would uh, create objects. And these objects could, be, could have various properties, which they called attributes, and they could also do things. And this, uh, this functionality was referred to as, you know, methods. The idea was to try to mimic real-world objects. Other things that they created was basically Ethernet and the graphical user interface. As we as you probably know, we use all of this on a daily basis. The class is the blueprint for the object. So the class is the definition of what the object is supposed to behave like. To create an object, we use the class keyword. Let's actually create an empty class with no attributes or methods. And to do that, we can just say class and then the name of it, say employee. And I'm going to just say pass. <clears throat> and that creates a class. By default, and by convention, I should say, uh, the class names are generally started with an uppercase. We can create instances of the class, and these instances are referred to as objects. So let's create instances of the class, that is, objects. I can create emp1. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Emp1 is equal to employee. You basically call the class's name. This is also called the constructor, emp2. Let me put underscores here so I'm more consistent with Python's uh, conventions. Employee. So there you go. I just created those. And I can actually print the emp1. And you can see that it shows that it's an object at a particular memory location, which is listed in hexadecimal. I can also print the ID of emp1. And you can see that it actually has an ID in memory someplace. So hopefully this is starting to make a little bit of sense. What I can do now, I can go ahead and add instance variables uh, to employee. Keep in mind that instance variable, remember that these were instances, m1 and m2. So instance variables are unique. If I can spell properly, unique to each instance. So that is an instance variable for m1 has nothing to do with m2. Uh, m1 has nothing to do with m2. Okay, so it's unique to each instance of the object. They are, in fact, called properties. So let's actually take a look at that. I'm going to create emp1.first for first name. I'm going to let that be bugs. 
I can create emp one dot last. And apparently I missed my quote here. Is bunny. I can create emp one dot say pay is equal to a hundred thousand. Now I can go to M2 and do the same thing. I can say M2 dot first is equal to Daffy M2 <clears throat> uh, dot last is equal to duck. And let's say M2 dot pay is equal to 80,000. So if I do shift enter here, all of these are created. I can, for instance, go in and print emp1 dot first, emp1 dot last, and emp1 dot pay. And you can see it prints that out. Now this is, of course, quite cumbersome to have to do this. So let's put in some notes here to avoid setting the variables manually like this. We can declare these as instance variables inside the class definition. To do this, to do this, we use the init, that's double underscore, and please make sure you understand it's a double underscore, I-N-I-T, another double underscore. We use the init constructor. This is referred to as a constructor. When creating corresponding functionality, otherwise known as methods, they receive the instance as the first parameter. By convention, we call this self. So I put some more notes here. So think about it like this. When we write self dot first is equal to F, it's like earlier when we wrote emp underscore one dot first is equal to say bucks. It's just now that this is done automatically in our constructor. So let's take a look at all this. So I'm going to create class. Let me actually put it inside the, uh, the comment section so we know it relates to that. I'm going to redefine employee. And don't forget the colon. <clears throat> the uh, initialization method, uh, or as we call constructor, starts with a double underscore init, double underscore, and then open close parentheses. In here, we're going to pass the self, which as you recall is the keyword that refers to uh, an object itself. So that's a must. It doesn't have to be called self, but everybody uses self. And then I can put in, you know, <clears throat> F, L, and let's say P, and I can assign default values to this if I want to. So let's say the pay is 50,000. This is called the constructor method. And then inside we say self dot first is equal to F. 
self dot last is equal to L. Now notice these variables, the first, last, are instance variable that we did up here. We are doing them inside the constructor here, and this is the stuff that gets passed along when the function is created. Remember in Python, what's on the right gets assigned to what's on the left. And I'm going to say self dot pay is equal, let's say P. I can also create things that aren't even there. So I can create an email and I'm going to say that's F plus a period plus the last plus, let's say at, um, I don't know, let's say uh, it's company dot edu. Okay. So I do a shift enter and the class structure has been created. So now I can go in here and create an MP3 instead of creating it in a sort of a haphazard way that we did over here. I can call the employee constructor and pass to it the things that I want. Well, I'm passing in the first name of Porky, the last name of Pig, and uh, say 90,000 for the salary. And there you go. Now what's interesting about this one is that I could go ahead and print all this. And you notice this is much more, uh, you know, uh, shall we say condensed. It's much easier to work with. So I can print mp3 dot uh, first, mp3 dot last, mp3 dot pay. Moreover, I could print, for instance, mp3.email. And notice that is constructed for us right off the bat. So this is wonderful that we can do this. Well, this is great, but we still haven't seen any functionality. These are our instance variables, otherwise known as properties or attributes. So there's an attribute of first name, last name, pay, and email. But it doesn't really do anything yet. So let's go ahead and add a method to this. I'm going to copy and paste this. And I'm going to do something that may seem a little radical. I'm going to actually change this to be first, last, and pay. Because this is how you typically see it. So this becomes first, last, and pay. Python keeps track of this with no problem, that the variables that are on the right-hand side are the parameters that were passed in, and what I'm creating on the left-hand side are instance variable internal to the object. So I'm going to go inside the class definition and notice the indentation that the, that the constructor has been indented in one space. I'm going to back indent because I don't want to be inside the definition of the constructor. I want to be out here to create my first method. I'm going to create a method called full name. And remember, all these methods get the self keyword, which is reference to the object itself. And this is going to simply return self.first, notice the self.first, plus a space, plus self.last. And I'll do shift enter. Let's create an employee for, and we're going to call employee. Sorry, I forgot my equal sign. We're going to call the constructor employee and pass to it Pete as first name and Puma as the last name. I'm not going to pass the pay. I remember that if I don't do that, it's going to default to what? To 50,000. So if I were to print, oops, got an error message. Oh, yes, I forgot to change these to first and last also. So let me go ahead and correct that. There we go. And let's do shift enter. If I were to print the uh, mp4.pay, just so you can see that that is 50,000. But I can now actually you know, call in mp4 and call a method. Um, and I can say, well, I want the full name. And it actually prints it out for me. Notice it is there. If I use the print statement and pass the method that way, it gets rid of the quotes because it's a print. Okay, so we have now created an object. Well, I've created a class from which we can actually create objects or instances of this class. 
and it has several attributes, a first, a last, a pay, and an email, and it has one method, which basically fetches the full name for us, which is great. So, um, I hope this makes it clear as to what object-oriented programming is. Let's go ahead and do uh, one more change to this. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to copy and paste this definition because I want to add to it. So I'm going to add one more method. So def, uh, and I'm going to call this apply raise, for instance. And it's going to take you know, no parameters. The only thing it takes is the self parameter in this case. I'm going to get self dot pay to be equal to the integer of self dot pay times, let's say 1.04 for 4% increase. So if I want to up give somebody a raise, I could do that. Let's go ahead and take a look at um, uh, take a look at uh, uh, M5. And I'm going to have M5 be equal to the constructor. So we're going to call the class name employee and pass to it, say Marvin, and then Martian. So that creates employee 5. I can call M5 that full name. And I can see it is Marvin Martian. That's good. I want to go ahead and take a look at M5's pay. And it's $50,000. What if I want to give employee 5 a raise? Well, I can call M5, call the apply raise method, and it's going to basically give a 4% raise to this employee. If I were to take M5.pay now, you notice that the salary went up to $52,000, which is great. So they got their raise basically. Um, let's uh, continue with this. So I'm going to make some notes over here working with class variables. So, so far we've worked with instance variables. So we want to now take a look at class variables. What are class variables? Well, class variables are different from instance variables. Class variables are there for every, and it's important to understand it's every, instance of the class that is for all objects i'm going to copy and paste my last creation right here and what i'm going to do is i'm going to go inside the class and it doesn't have to be up here but it's a good place to put it i'm going to put a raise amount here and i'm going to let that be equal to 1.04. So this is the class variable. Notice it is a class variable because it's inside the class definition. It's not inside the constructor or any of these methods. It's inside the class, so it applies to every class, basically. So what I can do is I can come down here. Instead of putting in 1.04, <clears throat> I can literally refer to this as self dot raise amount okay so good let's do a shift enter here and i'm going to create an employee six and set that equal to employee and let's have an employee called mickey mouse with a seventy thousand dollar pay I'm going to print emp6's full name. So I'm calling the method and also the emp6's pay. 
we can see that shows up. Now what I can do is I can call emp6 dot apply raise method and then take a look at print m6 dot pay as before you can see that this went up to seventy two thousand eight hundred dollars now what I could do is I could actually change the class variable so if I type in employee, which is my class definition, and call, and I can refer to anything in here by using the dot notation. I'm referring to the raise amount, basically. I'm going to change that to 1.07, let's say. Okay. So now if I go in here and type in m6 dot apply raise again, and then print m6 that pay, you can see that it actually went up by an additional 7%. I'm going to stop uh, this first part right here and we'll uh, create additional videos for continuing with this, but we will continue with the same notebook moving forward. I just don't want the videos to get way too long. I hope you enjoyed all this. I hope it was eye-opening for you. And if you're enjoying these, please share with your loved ones and friends. And as always, thank you for being a great audience.